Born in 1983 in Sacramento, California, Natalie Gulbus was born into a golfing family. Like all curious kids, she began picking up golf clubs around the house at age four. By age seven, she was competing in junior competitions and winning, and by age 10, she was breaking par. So it's easy to say she was a natural. Natalie was miles ahead of anyone her own age, and she was forced to skip age groups just to make it more competitive for her. At age 14, she became the youngest person ever to qualify for an LPGA event, and whilst in school, she competed on the men's team and was by far the standout player. These standout performances granted her a scholarship at the University of Arizona. Whilst there, she met LPGA Tour legend Lorena Ochoa, and between them, they won every college achievement possible, including first team All-American. After breezing through her golf career so far, it was time for Natalie to take the step up to the big stage. She qualified for the LPGA Tour via Q School in 2001 and began working very closely with legendary swing coach Butch Harmon. Like many good golfers when they take that step up, they realise things are a lot harder and they were probably a big fish in a little pond for most of their lives. However, that's not saying Natalie didn't play well or make a name for herself. She had plenty of top tens to keep her name in the limelight, but it was another thing that was catching people's attention. See, the men's game had already started making that switch from beer drinking, gut friendly, smoking talents into ripped athletes. And the women's game was not renowned for its eye catching celebrities either. So when people got a first glimpse of Natalie, it was something new and pleasing to the eye and people wanted to see more. The LPGA were very lenient with Natalie as she was doing a great job of advertising the LPGA. But Gulbis kept pushing the boundaries and was becoming more of a sex symbol rather than a professional golfer. Months before the Women's US Open, she published a calendar wearing next to nothing. And this was the line. The USGA banned the calendars being sold at any tour event. See, with fame comes a lot of haters. And most of them haters were fellow LPGA tour athletes. Natalie was getting all the big sponsorships and all the magazine covers, but hadn't even won a title. It was quite it's quite obvious that her fan base probably wasn't females being interested in the women's game, but rather men looking past all of her golf talent and focusing on her figure. With all the criticism coming her way, Natalie had a point to prove. She began competing again and had her best year to date, pushing for top 10s every week and earning over 1 million in prize money. Her results even got her into her first Solheim Cup. So even though she had proved she can play golf, this just made the media go even more crazy and her rivals even more frustrated as she still had no wins. With not much money in the women's game, Natalie was just riding her fame wave and making as much money outside of golf as possible. But as her money grew, so did the criticism. Being the poster girl for women's golf with zero wins really didn't do any favours for the women's game. The vice president of one of Natalie's sponsors, a luxury Swiss watchmaker Raymond Wheel was quoted saying, once she starts winning, She's going to be a megastar. Weeks later, Natalie picked up her first win at the Evian Masters. So this was now the point where Natalie could get the ball rolling, silence her critics, and really live up to the name she had made. But people were right, she would become a megastar, but off the course once again. As soon as she won, Everybody wanted a piece of the cake. She appeared on TV shows, game shows, commercials. She did more modeling. She was so busy and making so much money. But being successful off the course meant she was struggling on the course. She was still keeping her name out there and showing up for the majors. But winning just seemed a distant memory now. Natalie's swing is very unique. It requires a lot of flexibility and kicks out a lot of torque. But in return, also puts a lot of stress on her back. Something we haven't mentioned yet is Natalie suffered with extreme back problems her whole career and sometimes being out for months. So whilst not competing, she could put her name towards other things and still make an income. See, Natalie was clever. She knew early on this pain wasn't going to go away and she probably wasn't going to make that much money on tour. So when she was gifted with all these opportunities, she just took them. But the candle began fizzling out as the performance began to slip even further. And to carry on competing, she needed to get surgery on her back. The surgery was a success, and she was able to play a full schedule on tour again with no pain. But just as she was getting back into golf and competing again, she was struck with malaria and was out again for months. So now not playing golf again, Natalie went back to what she did best. She worked with companies, had more endorsement deals than anyone on tour, and even began building her own businesses. See. She could see that the end was near and she was now just clinging on as long as possible and began building an exit route. She began just playing in the big events, allowing her body plenty of time to rest between competitions. But even this wasn't enough. She just kept slipping down the leaderboards and didn't even manage another top 10 finish. After seeking help from Tiger Woods after yet another back injury, Natalie's time had come to an end. She had hung on long enough, but the pain was just getting too much now. And the further she slipped in tournaments, the more detrimental effect it would have on her life outside of sport. So with the final decision to retire from the LPGA Tour, 
Natalie's career has took another turn. From professional golfer to supermodel to business owner to now serving in politics, the swimsuit days are over and it's just suits she'll be wearing now. She served under Donald Trump as his counsel on sports and nutrition and has since rumored to fancy a shot at running for Congress. So you can call her overhyped or only got where she did because of her looks. But I think Natalie was clever. Without Natalie, the LPGA Tour wouldn't have got the publicity that it got. And without the LPGA Tour, Natalie wouldn't have got where she wanted in life. So they kind of helped each other out. Natalie made more money than most people in her time. And that comes down to her fantastic marketing skills and business mindset. She's paved the way for many young golfers coming through the ranks on being able to make money elsewhere, not just on the course. So whether you remember her for a unique swing or still have that poster on your bedroom wall, Natalie Gulbus will find a slot in the memory of many people. Thank you.